Good day, folks. I'd like to talk to you today about a configuration for a solid state Moray generator. And it's based on some of the concepts that I've been talking about recently, specifically towards reactive power. But before I continue on, I have to clarify that when I look into reactive power, I'm more interested into the features that most people don't look into. So usually when we refer to reactive power, people consider the X factor so let's say that a given LC system will drop our input current of active power to 14 watts. Now essentially this is a way of dropping the current efficiently without having to sacrifice a lot of losses doing it. Let's say if it's 14 watts I need. Now most people that explore this avenue also want to take advantage of the fact, specifically if they're on the grid of the ping pong, that, that most of that 14 watts, if well configured, could get reflected in theory back into the grid. Now, I'm not interested in that specific, specifically to get into the grid, but it's handy to have a reflection if you're going to use your own generator so you can recycle your, your, the little bit of the trigger you're using, you'll be able to recycle a good part of that. And I figure at the same time, why not use that and go one more step and add resonance take advantage of the um, reactive version of amps. It's actually VARs is the unit of measurement. Now what happens is you get a lot of that at resonance in relative to the input power, but because it's, it's reactive power, not active power, we don't usually regard that as actual real work because the real work is the active power, let's say the 14 uh, watts we use for our input trigger. Now what happens here is we're going to um, use resonance to take advantage of this, but what happens in a normal circumstance is no matter what you do, and most people notice already, an LC circuit has to be perfect balanced LC circuit at resonance. So as soon as you throw anything else in that loop, you try and tap into it with a rectifier, you try and plug in a load directly into that or whatever, whoom! you go back down, but at least you end up using the equivalents are close to that 14 watt. So what I'm getting at is by the time you usually transduce the active power, because you have to tap into the LC circuit, you lose that resonance amplification and you end up with the X drop, which is very typical when calculated. So you end up, needless to say, even though there's no gain, apart from the possible reflection off of that 14 watts you may get, it's efficient, but nothing magical, spectacular, right? So I always want to take things in, the, in more beyond. So what if we can tap into the LC's reactive power without dampening it or losing it? And there is a configuration, and Moray pretty well had it right. So let me explain to you, and simple, this is just a starting point. You're probably obviously going to have to adjust this because everything you do is going to change it. But generally speaking, this is a very, um, could be a simplified concept. So here's what I got here so far. And we're taking the assumption that we have 60 hertz at 14 watts input. That's our active power here. Why 14 watts? Because what I did, folks, is I tried to calculate a value at 60 hertz where the inductance and capacitance would be equal so that the displacement current, or in other words, the VARs, the uh, active, uh, sorry, the reactive amps, is good, accum um, amplification is at its maximum. So in order, essentially, to trigger the value of 70.4 UF and UH as your LC circuit, with some calculations, I determined that it'll take around, with the help of ChatGPT or any online calculator you want to use, that to be optimal, you'll need 14 watts to drive it. So here's our small input trigger that I'm talking about, which in reality, with these values, isn't exactly zero current, because 14 watts is something, right, folks? But if you put 14 watts input and you're getting over 1,000 watts VARs, that's a big increase. If only we could take advantage of that without dampening it as soon as we tap into it. So let's explore that. So here we have a very cheap inverter. Let's say a um, 110 volt inverter that runs at 24 volts. So here's our 20, a single 24 volt battery 
driving an AC out. Here we have a diode here, it's a rectifying diode, and we get the 50% quasi, you know, AC pulse, because the thing is, you don't need to um, overly load to trigger the um, LC circuit. So here is the primary, this is basically a, my close attempt as trying to draw the variac with the primary and secondary winding. Now what you're going to want to have is the whole um, LC circuit. So this side here would become the LC circuit. So the power would circulate all like this and go like that and come out like this. So this is your, your uh, the whole loop is actually part of the LC circuit. So what's very important is that the total inductance and total capacitance of the system be equal at 70.4 70 70 UH and 70.4 UF. Now the variac is going to help with fine tuning because I'm going to get into that, but if you have other devices like batteries and whatnot, it slightly varies it, but not very much, okay? So here it is, your crude representation. So what we're doing here is, very interestingly, instead of trying to take rectifiers or running it directly, I figured why not actually put the batteries as part of the LC circuit. So instead of dampening it, they just become a passive part of the actual a reactive state so that they're directly part of the amplified VAR output when we drive it at optimal value. So by doing this is basically just connecting the batteries in series with the loop. So you see, so it's very important here, you know, once you have your pulse and figure it out where, where your, your plus and negative cycles are. So I just drew this very quickly here. So here you've got positive, negative, positive. So it's just crisscrossing one battery to another here. Or, or depending on the system, you can probably go um, parallel as well. But, but to, to show that um, what happens is this is going to be a lot of voltage too. So um, you have to take consideration. These are 24 volt. DC batteries here. So one, two, three, four, five, five of them in series. And then you've got 200 watt lamps here and they're all connected in parallel. One, two, three, four, five. So all together they could take about a thousand watt load. But what's interesting is they're not tapping externally, they're actually part of the LC loop. And, of, and the thing is, you can run things in the LC circuit, folks. A lot of people forget, as long as it's a, uh, it's a inductive load. It's not, as soon as you start adding a lot of resistance here, or, or tapping you in it, this is where you get into trouble. So it's not optimal for resistive loads, but inductive loads will become part of that LC circuit. It's relatively easy to tune. So. So what we're going to do is between the lamps, inductive load, it's going to, with the variac, it won't be very much, a little fine tuning and we get our maximum displacement current. Now what's very interesting in this, oh, because you got to remember there's a capacitor here. So you're probably thinking, wait a minute, this is DC here. If you close the D, you're going to short the battery out. This is, this is in part the second feature of the capacitor here. Not only is it giving us reactive, but it's blocking the, uh, the batteries from shorting out at DC, but will allow the displacement current to go through. Now there's something else here going on, right? With displacement current, with ping pong between the LC circuit here, you get AC action back and forth and back and forth. So especially at high voltage, high currents, at optimal reactive power, the batteries wouldn't be able to handle the negative part of the cycle. Whoops! So what would we have to do? You typically rectify. You rectify, then you screw around. It's directly coupled. Your 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 reactive power goes boom back into the equivalent of near that 14 watts. You just lost your gain. I guess go back to one, right? But this is how we're doing it differently now. I thought of this for a moment and trying to think of inductive rectifications and whatnot. So I came up with this. It's not very efficient, but on the negative side of where the cycle comes in, 
This is where you put your 200 watt lamp. So not only are they acting as tuning and allowing you to use that, that actual reactive power, but during the negative part of the cycle, the lamps will absorb most of the load so that the batteries won't essentially fry themselves during the other part of the cycle. And when it gets back to the positive part of the cycle, because the batteries, and Bedini took advantage of that on a circuit at AC, they seem to be near zero resistance. So the power flows f almost freely through the loop, through the batteries, but it's, it's that flow of energy that realigns chemically the battery, very similar to how Bedini would charge his batteries with the AC spikes pulse DC, and the batteries actually like this kind of stuff. So naturally speaking here, all these batteries are going to quickly charge. There's going to be a slight drop during the negative cycle, but the lights will absorb most of it and it will make up for it on the positive cycle where the battery, because just by the configuration of the circuit where it's going to be the plus cycle that hits the battery first. And then you got to play around with the placement. It's not perfect, but it's screwed and it allows us to keep our, we want to leave the reactive LC circuit alone and you want to keep that DC loop open at all times. But it's just with the AC signal, we would need to do something about that. So it's not just the light's purpose to be pretty and to say, look at what we're running with just 14 watts of input. The lamps have a purpose to protect the batteries during that negative cycle. So with that said, you can charge your batteries, you can run your, these could probably be heating elements if you wanted this to be a heater, an efficient heater, and at the same time charge your 524 volt batteries and just do the Bedini swap, you know. Because in theory, of course, at 14 watts, at perfect uh, LC, you'd get zero but you can't really do that. I mean, you still need to give it a trigger. You're still going to have a little bit of losses and there's still that, that magnetization energy that, so that 14 watts you're going to have to use. And even though in theory, all of it can get reflected back, it's not going to happen in real life. You might get near. So not only are you only, you're only using 14 watts, but a good part of that 14 watts, folks, whether it's from the grid or your own generator, at perfect LC, most of it will be recycled back into your system. So this is a super, super efficient way of running intense loads, charging big batteries for milliamps, basically, when you look at the input and what you're getting out of it. So again, I put some notes here. Reactive power is not optimal for direct coupling, obviously, because you want to leave that. Uh, the secret is keep the LC circuit as an LC circuit. Now, one can go very, very um, precise in here. They could add like a vacuum cap here for tuning, but then you're going to have to to uh, take into consideration your parallel and series capacitance and take into consideration your inductance value of the lamp and everything. And what matters is that 70.4, that's the number, folks. As long as the total of this loop equals 70.4 UF and 70.4 UH, this is the sweet spot at 60 hertz. I did it in my example at 60 hertz, but obviously if you know what you're doing, this becomes actually even more efficient at higher frequencies. But then when you're dealing at higher frequencies, the interactions here are somewhat different. You start having something that ends up looking more like a Kappa Gen, the Don Smith kind of stuff at high frequency. Same principles, but a little bit different circuit interaction naturally because of the um, variables we have to deal with at high frequency. But keeping it simple, one could use 60 hertz and get very good with this concept without having to use spark gaps and Tesla coils or anything like that. Just stick with your 70.4 UH and 70.4 UF. That's maximal, it'll take about 14 watts again, less whatever that gets reflected back. Very, very, very efficient. And uh, here, 
if, if you do the calculation, you get something well over 1,000 VARs. So what happens is I don't want to put a, like, I don't want to tell you, oh, it's going to be 1.4 something because someone's going to go on here and scrutinize me and say, well, it's impossible. It's going to be lost. And then, so I'm just going to tell you, no, it's well over 1,000. There's going to be some inefficiencies. But even so, you know, the equivalent of 1,000 reactive amps for 14 watts input is still, you know, it doesn't take rocket science to find out if you can somehow tap into the, in, the LC's uh, reactive power, you can get a lot there. So here's the way of doing it. One of the ways, anyways. Um, at high frequency, it gets a little bit more complicated. You might have to introduce additional filtering, LCR network filterings, to uh, take care of the high frequencies hitting the batteries, and then an additional modulator, optionally, if you need like 60 hertz or something with that high frequency energy. So again, as I've said, you change the frequency as you go higher, it gets a little more complicated, but um, same idea, folks. So I hope, again, here I, I, I try to make an emphasis on the total L is the total C, and the resonant point is 70.4 at 60 hertz. So keep that loop open as DC and have the batteries in that loop. The capacitor here will stop the batteries from shorting out on themselves. And where you place the load here will protect the battery during the negative part of the really reactive high power cycle. So I'll try and make a circuit diagram and share this with you online for those who want that. So I hope this puts light on what it is and I'm experimenting with and what it is I'm trying to get at. You know, there's so much more in reactive power than trying to get most of that 14 watts back. You know, that, that's child's play. Get serious and take advantage of an LC circuit at resonance for what resonance can actually really do. So with that said, folks, something to think about. Thank you for watching.